bitches, it's Em and welcome back to my channel. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. My name's Em, I'm a former zookeeper and I'm a digital animal educator. Today I am going to be reacting to my subscribers' pet enclosures. Now, just between Twitter and Instagram, I had over 400 submissions, so naturally I can't get around to all of them in today's video, but it makes me think that perhaps this could become a little series, so let me know what you think about turning this into like a kind of mini-series every one or two months. Let me know down in the comment section below. Today we have some pretty amazing submissions. I am just so proud. I feel like a proud auntie to you all, um, so I would love to shine a light on some really great examples of pet enclosures. And and then we had some not so great submissions, but it is really important to remember that anybody who is willing to put their enclosure out there for constructive criticism is super, super brave. So thank you so much. And if I do give you constructive criticism, it doesn't come from a place of hate. It comes from a place of wanting to just make suggestions so that you and your pet can live your best, healthiest, wellest lives. Did that even make sense? Best, healthiest, wellest lives. Wellness. So that you can feel great about giving your pets the very best care. There we go. This first enclosure, or should I say aquarium, comes in from Madeline Fleming on Instagram, and it is an enclosure for her beta fish, also known as a Siamese fighting fish. Madeline says, this is our 10 gallon beta tank. His name is Gil. I love that. Was that inspired by Finding Nemo? First of all, I just want to say I am so glad and grateful to see that you didn't just buy the smallest enclosure that you could at Petco or PetSmart. Better fish, unfortunately, are one of these fish that are commonly sold as a fish that has very, very minimal needs. And honestly, they're not particularly difficult fish to look after, but their needs have been reduced so drastically by pet stores who want to quickly sell small items that they can easily stock their shelves with, i.e. small enclosures. Um, that they often get neglected and abused um, and I'm so glad to see him in at least a 10 gallon. Honestly a 15 or a 20 gallon would be better because really who doesn't want more space for their animals but this is a really great enclosure for just one better fish. Naturally you don't want to ever pair your male with another male or in a place that they can see another male because it really gets them riled up and in the same enclosure they can fight to the death. Now in here I would say this is perfect for one if you were ever going to introduce a female or a couple of females go bigger but Gil looks really happy in here by himself I love that you have some living plants living plants just they encourage so many more natural behaviors in an animal as opposed to plastic plants like they can really feel the benefit um, it also helps with filtration it helps to keep down certain nasties in the water so there are so many benefits to having the right aquarium plants in a planted aquarium pothos are great as you can see I have a lot of pothos I'm a very big fan of pothos because it's one of the only plants that I don't kill on a regular basis and they can grow quite well as a hydroponic so I'm really glad to see this I see a really good filtration system I can see a really fantastic thermometer there the enclosure looks really nice and clean there's plenty of hiding spaces lots of things for your better to do lots of things for it to rub against or to swim against overall I really like this enclosure a lot Something that you could potentially do to improve is perhaps to get a couple of different pond weeds in there, um, something that's a bit taller, more vertical, plant it towards the front of the enclosure, and that way um, you're really maximizing the space that you have, the real estate that you have in that enclosure, because there's quite a little bit of dead space just here, and it would be really lovely enrichment to allow your better fish to just swim in and out of a couple of other plants. Otherwise, it looks like a really beautiful tank. I'm gonna give this, uh, an A minus. An A minus. Fishy! Fishy! Wake up! Oh, this next enclosure comes in from Dakota Evans again on Instagram. And you go, if you know me, you know I'm gonna love this enclosure. This enclosure right here is actually created by Zen Habitats. I happen to be their vice president of sales and marketing for their UK territory. 
so I naturally am very partial to these enclosures. Um, something that you just can't grasp from a picture of a Zen habitat is how massive they are. That's a Zen habitat, that's a Zen habitat. I have two to the side over here. Now this over here looks like the four by two by two wood panel enclosure. Um, that's great for bearded dragons. I'll actually link it down below because you can pre-order ahead of time now. We've got a shipment coming in later this month. Um, and what you don't realize from these enclosures is that they are actually three times the size of a 40 gallon breeder. So next time you see a 40 gallon breeder, just imagine that three times the size. That is exactly what a four by two by two wood panel enclosure from Zen Habitats is. Shameless plug because I love the company and I deserve a raise. Ah. <laughs> Okay, so this enclosure overall looks absolutely gorgeous. You have the lighting on the inside and the heating mats. That's exactly the way to go. Really utilizing the support bars that we have on top of the enclosures. The hammock is great. The only thing about this hammock, um, other than it being leopard print, <laughs> <laughs> no offense, but leopard print is just not my jam. 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 I just don't like fabric for any reptiles. I don't know what it is, but the thought of having any reptile on anything fleecy for me, it just screams dirty. And it also makes me worry about them potentially catching their claws. But um, that's, that's not to say that you don't clip your bearded dragon's nails, Dakota. Now I'm assuming that these plants are plastic plants and I don't blame you because bearded dragons are just known for chomping on anything in their enclosure um, so yes there are a couple of plants that could be problematic to bearded dragons there are also some which hold up a little bit better in an enclosure um, so I can see why you've used plastic here I also can see your note at the bottom here Dakota where you said that since you took this picture you've set your bearded dragon Groot up with the linear UV which is wonderful totally the way to go that would be these strip uvs here and if you are for whatever reason looking for um a really good source for quality uv um i highly recommend arcadia reptiles so i will link them down below so you can go and explore their products i love that your bearded dragon obviously has a warm spot you've got that light um correctly directed into a corner because naturally as a reptile a bearded dragon wants to be able to thermoregulate they want to choose if they want to be warmer or cooler and if you are heating the entire enclosure that can be really stressful so this is great to see um, I love that you have that heat situated in one basking area it almost looks like pride rock which I'm a huge fan of um, and then you also have that cork bark which it looks like the bearded dragon can go into so you've got some darker shady areas where you can go to to hide I really like this enclosure a way that you might be able to improve this enclosure is perhaps to get some really nice heavier thicker branches um, and somehow strategically strategically place them just to lift the enclosure somewhat from the inside and give your bearded dragon more opportunities to climb and to work those claws. Um, but overall this is a solid effort and I'm going to give this a solid A because it's a great effort. Yes! This next enclosure is submitted by Emma and Pets from Finland, uh, which happens to be literally my favorite European country that I visited so far and she is sharing with us her enclosure that she has outdoors it's actually a pen for her horse field tortoise and I do apologize if I am mispronouncing your tortoise's name his name is Va Voti 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 Naughty Voti is he an escape artist well, the answer to that question would be no, because you have done a phenomenal job of proofing your outdoor pen. So let's just take a look at Emma's outdoor tortoise enclosure. Now, the first thing that strikes me about your enclosure is just the sheer size, and people really don't understand how much ground a tiny tortoise can actually cover. So it's great to see that he has some really varied terrain in there. You've got a great substrate, which he can burrow down into. I can see that you've got several different hide boxes depending on where the sun is hitting the enclosure so no matter what the time of day is Vorti can go into a hide which is in the shade which is wonderful I also see you have a mini pond in there for him my goodness he is a spoiled tortoise and it's also a hard standing area with those paving stones where you can easily feed him and collect up all of his uneaten veggies it looks really wonderful um, the other thing that really strikes me about this enclosure 
pleasure is just the lengths you've gone to to protect your tortoise. A lot of people lose their tortoises every year, number one, because of burrowing. And I can see here that you have put some really great mesh at the bottom so nothing can burrow out, but also importantly, nothing can burrow in either. And you've also taken measures to secure the top, which is fantastic because you wouldn't believe how many people lose their tortoises every year to all different kinds of predators. Now here in the USA, a long time ago, I actually lost a tiny little terrapin that I was caring for to a raccoon. It was, it was heartbreaking and they have such fiddly fingers. So if you're in the USA, do make sure that if you have your um, reptiles outdoors, that you protect them from little fiddly fingered predators. Um, but not only that, there are other animals which can also get in and just bother your animal to death. For example, free roaming cats might come over and be interested in number one, digging and squatting in a wonderful outdoor tortoise pen, but also just harassing your tortoises to the point that they could could also die from stress. So it's really great to see that you've taken those measures to not only give a huge enclosure, as well as lots of varied textures and hiding spots and water so that it can soak, um, hard standing so that it can eat really comfortably and, and helps to keep all the food contained and clean, um, but also the proofing at the top and the bottom of the enclosure. So overall, I am going to give you, Emma, a A star for this enclosure. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. I have no additional um, kind of uh, comments to make. It even looks like he has some edible plants in there. You've got all the bases covered. You should be super proud of yourself. I love it. Fist bump. I was not punching you. That was supposed to be a fist bump. Please don't sue me. Next up, we're jumping over to Twitter, and I am going to be reacting to Tommy, aka the Shy Pianist One's hamster enclosure. And <laughs> oh no, oh no, no, no. Okay, so first of all, I just wanna say don't hate me, Tommy, because it is really brave of anybody to submit their enclosure for scrutiny. Um, but this is, um, it, it's a real pet peeve of mine, if you'll excuse the pun, that so many of these enclosures are just the common standard that you find in a pet store. And when we go into a pet store as a consumer, we expect the items that are pre-selected for us in a pet store to be beneficial to our animals, because why wouldn't a pet store sell that? But remember, pet stores have space limitations and it, they are not going to turn as much of a profit selling a high priced item which is large and takes up a lot of shelf space when they can cram in a lot of easy to buy impulse bought enclosures that are really small and fit really nicely on those shelves that they can sell lots of. Um, so. I would just say, first of all, this is a really, really small enclosure. Um, hamsters will cover a lot of ground. They love to climb, which is why in these enclosures, you see them often uh, almost like acrobats, you know, climbing up the side and doing, hanging off the top. It's because they're bored and frustrated. So if you're noticing that, then certainly I would, um, think very quickly about getting a larger enclosure. Now, um, you haven't specified here um, whether your hamster is um, a Russian dwarf hamster, in which case this would be, you know, uh, still small, but uh, but if this is a Syrian hamster we're looking at, this is a, a really tiny enclosure. Um, I can also see there's a lot of plastic in here. I do not like plastic in rodents enclosures specifically because they gnaw. Um, and uh, because they're always growing their teeth, they're always gnawing. And if there isn't something in there for them to gnaw on, which is appropriate, like a, a mineral block or appropriate foods um, or different kinds of um, untreated woods, for example, um, they can actually turn to the plastics and ingest that that can become a problem. Um, overall, I just, I feel like your hamster would be really bored in here. Yes, there's a wheel, um, and I'm glad to see at the very least that it's a, um, a solid wheel. It's not a wheel that has lots of little lines. Um, I'll insert a picture because I'm not really describing very accurately what I mean. Um, but with these wheels, a lot of hamsters do end up cutting their, um, their toes and also getting their feet stuck. So I'm glad to see that you have a covered wheel. That's really great research there on your part. But honestly, I would go bigger 
and look into perhaps like an IKEA alternative if you can save up for that. Um, IKEA do these um, Detolves, I think they're called, um, which are really long and they're glass, they're easy to clean, um, and they're just, they afford a lot more space for your hamster to exercise thoroughly. Um, in the meantime, if you can't afford that, I do understand not everybody is in like a super privileged position. So for now, I would try and get some more different toys in there, things for him to gnaw on. It doesn't even have to be that complicated. Um, you can even take just a bunch of grass from um, outdoors, provided it hasn't been treated with pesticides, and put it in there just as something for him to smell. Um, so you can you can just sort of switch it up in there for him right now a little bit, um, but certainly more things to climb on. Um, you can hang different things from the top of the enclosure that perhaps he can try and climb on, like a hammock or something. Um, and uh, yeah, I would just I would try and upgrade this as soon as possible because it is really small and because it's such a small enclosure you can't do much with it um, so really upgrade this um, for you as a person for submitting it a star thank you so much as an actual enclosure D I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> Next up on Twitter, I will be reacting to um, S. Crutchfield's um, pictures. I actually know S. Crutchfield. This is Stacy Crutchfield. She's married to a very good friend of mine. Um, and she is hilarious. And not only that, she has some pretty bomb enclosures as well. Um, this one over here it looks like a vision enclosure. Stacy, this is not big enough for you. I'm worried about where you might be using the bathroom in this enclosure. You don't seem to have a litter tray for yourself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I don't know actually what you're keeping in here, um, but it's a lovely large enclosure. And the, the, the great thing about vision enclosures is they really do promote high humidity. Um, so they're great for animals that do require higher humidity. And and then I would just like to point out this adorable picture of you with one of your crocodile monitors. I know how much time and effort you put into these crocodile monitors. Crocodile monitors are not for a beginner, they're not even for intermediate, and sometimes not even for expert keepers. They need a ton of work, they need a ton of space and I know that you have a really special relationship with your croc monitors so Stacy thank you so much for submitting this picture it's gorgeous I love it love you I cannot wait to see you and Tom again sometime in the near future when it's a bit more safe for me to travel um, and also thank you for everything you're doing in terms of promoting people to have a higher level of husbandry and understanding for the intelligence of reptiles love it but girl get yourself a litter tray because we're not about just going in a corner we're not about that life. <laughs> Overall, just for you and the way you keep all of your animals, a star, 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 star. Love it. Wow, okay, also on Twitter, Porpoisefully Wild, um, at Tanza Jade, um, has submitted an, an enclosure of their two-year-old Brazilian rainbow boa. Now, I love Brazilian rainbow boas, and I always see them being kept in um, predominantly like terrestrial enclosures with very few places to climb, which is, is awful because Brazilian rainbow boas love to climb. And this enclosure looks absolutely beautiful. It's planted so gorgeously. You've got really healthy plants, which obviously means that you've got some really fantastic UV UV, really quality UV. The enclosure dimensions are 120 cm by 75 cm by 80 cm, so it's a pretty hefty enclosure. Now I I do see that you've said that you don't have guards on all of your lights because even if your Brazilian rainbow boa came out and tried to get up there, they couldn't. I beg to differ. Um, I think that snakes will always find ways of surprising us, especially as they grow. So honestly, I would take the time and invest in just guarding against those um, uh, potential heat burns that your snake could be getting. Um, that's why people do use guards over their heat lamps because snakes do often climb and they wrap around light bulbs and they get belly, uh, belly burn so um, I would encourage you to do that but overall oh my goodness just the detail that you've put into this enclosure is absolutely stunning I cannot see a single thing other than the the guards to fault you on here um, it looks like you've got really great UV I'm sure that your heating is up to par everything looks really healthy in there like literally in this one enclosure your plants look infinitely better than any plant that I've poured my heart and soul into um, that I have so I'm extremely jealous and just in awe of that you've got a wonderfully sized soaking dish there cannot see your um, Brazilian rainbow boa 
So obviously they're having happy, they're having a great time hiding. And you've also sent me, which I appreciate very much, a picture of your actual Brazilian rainbow boa, Kai, Kaipora, Saipora, Kaipora. And she looks really healthy. Look at that iridescence. What a gorgeous creature. And she's very lucky to have you. I'm going to give you an A star for this enclosure. I could feel myself dipping in energy, so I decided to take a quick 10 minute break and eat some lemon cake, hydrate myself, and now I'm ready to go again. Okay, straying away from cake and over into business, <laughs> um, we are going to be looking at Miranda Aline's pictures of her business of ferrets and their enclosure setup. Miranda, this is a great enclosure setup. This looks like two, I think, ferret nations put together. The space that you've dedicated to your ferrets is wonderful. Ferrets do need um, surface area to walk around on. They, rather than giving them lots of height, it's good to give them um, an area where they can actually sort of play and tumble together. And they have really great space here. Um, I can see that their feeding stations look really nice and clean. Um, they have really great beds. Bedding. I think, oh, I do see a hammock. Beg my pardon, I was gonna say it'd be nice to have hammocks because they love to snuggle in hammocks and not just on regular beds like the dog bed that I can see there um, top center. But you do have a couple of hammocks at the bottom, which is lovely. Um, it's also really smart because that frees up floor space for your multiple litter trays that I can see that you have here. Um, I see from your comment that this large black litter tray is actually a cement mixing tray. I love that. That's inspired. Um, it looks like you have, I think, kitchen tile at the bottom, which is again very smart because it's very wipeable. I like that a lot. Um, it's a really great enclosure. Um, it's a really good size. It looks like you've got one, two, three, four ferrets as far as I can see. They look really healthy. I love seeing them all piled into their beds together. It's really cute. Um, and I love the fact that you're using um, a uh, three foot cement mixing tray as their litter tray. That is so smart. I love that. I'm going to give this ferret enclosure an A star because ferret enclosures are often just diabolical and you've done a great job. Even though it's not like to my particular liking in terms of what you're using on the top floor, the, the, the substrate technically, like the bedding, um, overall it looks really, really good and I can't fault it. So well done. A star for your ferret enclosure. Next up, I'll be reviewing a bird enclosure. This is for two parakeets, and this is submitted by Jet the Service Yorkie on Instagram. Now, I just have to say, first of all, I appreciate that you're keeping your budgies, or sorry, I call them budgies. I know they're technically parakeets, but in England we've called them budgies for a long time because they look so similar to English budgies. Um, I appreciate that you're keeping your parakeets in a pair. Um, it, it breaks my heart when people keep parakeets, um, or budgies for that matter, um, just by themselves. They love company. Now, to the actual enclosure, it's a very small enclosure. Um, and uh, I know that, again, this is like one of these sort of like cheap cheaper enclosures which one buys from a pet store and just quickly assembles with the hooks around the side and everything. I just don't like them. Um, number one, I think that they are very uh, unappealing aesthetically but also just the shape of them is very impractical because your birds want to be able to have some width you know to be able to fly from one side of the enclosure to the other as well as some height so if you can somehow work it into your budget um, I would highly recommend something uh, like a preview Hendrix uh, enclosure that would be wonderful um, they're very sturdy they're on wheels that would give you a lot more um, space for your your birds to play with um, but, but now on to uh, a couple of the positives, um, the chaos. So it's great that you have a lot of toys in there for them. Um, I've seen a lot of these toys, uh, number one on Amazon, but also in pet stores. And honestly, if you haven't seen my video about um, uh, seven secrets pet stores don't want you to know, I highly recommend that because there's a lot of bird toys that are uh, marketed in a pet store and sold in a pet store, which aren't actually suitable. Um, I wouldn't be able to really give a rundown until I I actually really felt those toys but a lot of them look like what I see in um, 
in pet stores which aren't always the best quality. Um, in terms of your perches, I would like to see different diameters. I can see that the perch that your um, birds are currently sitting on is like a textured perch which is used for helping them to cope their beaks. Um, that means like filing their beaks and keeping them in shape. That's great. I'm glad to see that you've, you've got that and you've got different textures going on. Um, but I'd like to see more diameters, different kinds of diameters, thinner branches, thicker branches, um, because if you constantly keep your birds on perches which are just the same diameter, um, it can actually cause them to have very weak feet. So in order to strengthen their feet, you want to have different diameter perches in there. So if you can work it into your budget, that would be wonderful. You've got lots of cuttle on offer, which is great. And I love that you have a stainless steel bowl. So I'm a huge fan of stainless steel when it comes to uh, feeding my animals. It's just, I feel the easiest to sterilize and to clean. So I'm very happy to see that. Um, I don't see any kind of bird bath. Now, parakeets love to take a bath. So if you're not spraying them down every day, um, if they enjoy it, then I would highly recommend that you look into getting some kind of a bird bath add-on for them. I think that that would, in this enclosure specifically, because I can see the lift up doors you have, be a way to give them a bit of extra space to enjoy doing something different. So that would be a recommendation. Um, but overall, um, it's not it's not terrible, but it's not a particularly good enclosure either. And that's not to say that you haven't put the effort into making it as good as possible, but there's very limited real estate for you to play with there. So honestly, if you can, I would upgrade to a much larger enclosure. And thank you very much for submitting this. I'm going to give this a C. It's a C. It's, it's passable, um, but it's still a kind of sad looking enclosure. So your birds would benefit so much more from more space, um, but they look lovely and healthy. Um, and thank you very much for sharing them with me. And finally, we come to our very last submission for this episode of reacting to my subscribers pet enclosures. And this submission comes in from an Instagram account called The Little Hamster Club, which sounds adorable. And I wanted to end on a high note and this really is a high note for a hamster. Um, this is a double detolf. Now, if you're not familiar, a lot of people are just not satisfied with the current availability of different kinds of enclosures for hamsters on the pet market. They're just, most of them are just cheap plastic and wire rubbish, um, which are not suitable for even some of the smallest hamster species. So a lot of people have taken it upon themselves to customize either um, uh, wardrobes, a chest of drawers, uh, um, any kind of cabinet and this is just such a great example of pet owners taking the initiative to customize an enclosure because there aren't particularly good ones on the market right now for hamsters and this here is two detolfs so this looks absolutely gorgeous there I don't even know where to start there's so much going on in these two enclosures so this isn't just one detolf it's two put together so it's it's double the gargantuan amount of space that you get with just one detolf um, I can see live plants, really great amounts of substrate and bedding. There's so many places to climb and hide. I'm seeing millet spray in there. Um, there's just so many different aspects to this enclosure. Um, and for any hamster, this is truly magnificent. This is a real just beauty of a mansion. Um, I can see that they've got this wheel, which is a very popular wheel. I think I've seen bought, bought on Etsy. I think that they're available on Etsy. Um, it's like a smooth wheel, um, which makes it really easy to clean, but also means that they can't hurt their toes and their legs by having them get stuck in traditional wheels, the ones that are just like wire wheels that make a ton of noise. Um, and I just, I think this is absolutely splendid and, and just so lovely to see. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. I can kind of peep your hamster right at the back of the enclosure and he looks absolutely beautiful or she looks absolutely beautiful um, and uh, I just I have no other comments I can see you've got feeding dishes I can't see where your water is but oh wait yes I can I can see it at the back there you've got all the bases covered it looks wonderful and I highly encourage those of you who are considering getting a hamster to just don't waste your money on a lot of the hamster enclosures that you do get um, at pet stores. If anything, a lot of the glass reptile enclosures are far more suitable for a hamster than traditional wire hamster enclosures. So please do, like, have a look on Pinterest and other places to get some inspiration for your pet enclosures. Uh, and thank you again, um, the Little Hamster Club, for sending that in to me. I'm so 
glad to see that it's such a lovely enclosure and such a great way to encourage others to push for more for their hamsters too. So for you, for your hamster enclosure, A star. And honestly, thank you all so much for your submissions. I'm going to have to do another video because there were so many submissions and honestly it was very tough to find really bad enclosures. Um, I'm so proud of the Creature Crew. A lot of you have put so much time and effort and dedication into your enclosures and it really shows and it just makes me feel so proud. So thank you for sharing those um, and I will try and get round to more of you next time um, but I do have limited time available. I can't do absolutely everyone so please don't take it as I'm not interested in your enclosures or that they weren't good enough to be featured. I literally was going through and just like scrolling, stop, open, I'll re react that one just to just to make it fair and I also wanted to get some variation as well so not just all uh, reptiles and not just all mammals or all birds as well uh, thank you all so much for watching today's video that is the end I am absolutely exhausted because I haven't been sleeping very well but I got me a date later so I gotta go get ready um, but I really hope that you enjoyed this video if you have any comments or questions leave them down below and I will see you in another video soon bye